Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the VV Vantage Podcast. Over the past two weeks, we had so many exciting updates and today we'll be talking about all of them. We'll get started with David's trip to Japan and how he was hinting on potential partnerships and drops including Capcom's Street Fighter, Uniqlo, and Pokemon. The last one is still a pure speculation, of course. We'll also talk about the significance of localization and how it will help unlocking the global growth of the app. Let's get to it. So VV had a really good two weeks in terms of app update and potentially new partnership. So I want to talk about them. And FYI, the IPs that I'm about to mention, I actually don't know much about them. So I will talk about the high level stuff and not pretend like I know about them and I'll pretend like I'm a fanboy or something of these IPs simply because I don't want to sound like an idiot. Uh, but what got, got me pretty excited over the past week was David's trip to Japan. I think he also visited other countries as well, but he shared some photos in Japan. The first one is Capcom or uh, uh, Street Fighter in particular. And when I saw that, so I have only played Street Fighter once or twice. But when I saw that photo, I did some research and I found that they have like 121 characters, which is a lot, right? If you think about all the drops from this from this particular IP. It is one of the most popular games globally and over 120 characters. So if hypothetically, every drop is gonna be four characters, right? And then every quarter, Vivi can do one Street Fighter drop. That's gonna be like years of uh, really good content for them to drop. So that is a pretty big inventory. And so I, I also understand that not all of these characters will be desirable, right? Because people only play maybe five, 10 of them. But now, since we are familiar with Vivi's trick of using scarcity to increase demand, and now we have crafting and burning too. So for the characters that might not be very popular or that might not be very desirable, they can make them scarce or they can make you buy four undesirable or not very popular characters in order to be eligible for a particular airdrop of a very special popular character or you can burn something to get that so there's a lot of things they can do with an ip like street fighter and i know people were expecting gamification i don't think that's going to happen in the next few years if anything that burning crafting and, and airdrop that's going to be the gamification that we will see but there are another way for vv to make this very exciting and make it closer to the game um, is the fact that i realize each of these characters have their own moves so you play them you get to a certain point and then you do this combo thing so they have each of them has a combo they can use this combo as the animations for each of them. And that's going to be really, really cool. So off the top of my head, I was, and I was actually just trying to check out what they were, but mm -hmm. there's a company that's a competitor with, I am a uh, immutable X. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Oasis O A S Y S. Yeah. And they have Bandai Sega and one other pretty big IP, but, uh, but like, um, we're talking about like, big, big time gaming companies, mm -hmm. right? And, and they just launched their their first, uh, what's it called? Their first on-chain, blockchain uh, game mm -hmm. for a major company. Oh, it was Ubisoft. Is oh, it Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Or I actually Ubisoft? don't know. How do, you, how do you pronounce it? Do you know? I think it is Ubisoft. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a big gamer, so like, yeah, same. <laughs> I only play FIFA, so that's all I know. <laughs> but uh, so, excuse me if I'm saying this wrong, everyone. But uh, everyone listening, but I guess Ubisoft has some game um, that they launched, and they're using Oasis as their chain, like their, the chain that they're using for their games. That's a pretty big step for the for the blockchain gaming space for for having the first big time i think it's called the triple a gaming company yeah to launch launch on online on the blockchain right right 
and uh, what you're talking what you were talking about with um street fighter and everything i think in order to keep up i i i wouldn't put them out of the conversation um i think i think if anything they're probably well there's there's first user advantage right whenever there's a, a big mm-hmm. whenever there's a company that jumps into a particular space they're either gonna they're, they're gonna make both good moves and bad moves and then the competitors are going to be able to use that as data for what they could spend more time on to improve upon um and and what they could build off of right so yeah. I, kind of, I kind of you know there's pros and cons and and i don't think that it's we could count um, street fighter as being out of the conversation quite yet because yeah. there's a lot to to see uh, in terms of developments and with this blockchain gaming uh, right so you are absolutely correct uh, ubisoft just launched its first ever web3 game which is called champions tactics grimoria chronicles which will launch on the oasis blockchain so you're right they just launched a, a web3 game so this is a big stepping stone for the whole industry but i want to uh, so I forgot to mention this disclaimer, the, the collectibles that Street Fighter is releasing on um, VV, they won't be the first on a blockchain because there are existing Street Fighter NFTs on WAX already. They're in the form of just like cards. So digital cards, like the um, like the HRO stuff. So they look pretty boring. So I really hope that the 3D modeling on VV and the fact that you can add animations and sound will make them a lot more attractive to collectors and other fans, you know? Yeah, I, I think I was able to mention that in a, on a previous um, show that we had. And then also something to think about, not that we need to deep dive into it, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like the whole conversation of FE versus FA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Disney lenticulars with Minnie, uh, Donald, Daisy. Yeah, Pluto and Goofy, like five out of those six were were well, actually all of them were first edition lenticulars. But it wasn't the first appearance of Mickey. It was technically the first appearance of the other five, but it's only labeled as the FEs. Those are only labeled as the FEs first editions. And then we have like the first appearance of Minnie, and then we've got a lot of room for for all these other things. So, um there's there's gonna be a lot of budding heads um moving forward because of this sort of thing that's happening and it's good you know mm-hmm. it, it, it stirs the pot it, it gets a lot of excitement it it it's gonna cause a lot of discussions you know mm-hmm. pol- pol- polite ones and not so polite ones i actually got burned with the wonder woman Faye because wonder woman already came out somewhere else before she was released on vivi but I'm not going to go down, down that rabbit hole. Um, Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take another hour. Uh, the second photo that David shared on Instagram is the Pokemon photos. So this is, so he had two photos of him probably like eating at a Pokemon theme restaurant or something like that and taking photo. Okay. I don't follow Pokemon, so I, I'm not going to name the character. But that created a lot of hype from everybody. And so for Pokemon, this is an IP that I won't talk too much about because many other people have talked about it already. But what's really funny is on Facebook, some people got excited, but some people were low key upset simply because over the past two weeks, I think the floors went up slightly, right? Now, with the speculation of Pokemon, people were selling stuff and some people were afraid that this is new is going to stop that momentum. But anyways, I I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, Well, could could I speak to that? Okay, go on. All right. So I think that if if you're in the space, if you're on Vivi Mm -hmm. and you're not aware of the reasons why market movement is happening good like up or down with particular collectibles then i think that there needs to be some research done some time understanding why things are moving the way that they are and that kind of plays into the whole do your own research part it's just yeah more, um 
but to be fair with everybody who's listening about uh the po- like david taking pictures with like pokemon themed i don't know items or restaurants or with items in the background of his pictures in one of the previous amas uh i believe that the team had spoken about the process of when they onboard a new license right so if if today they were to onboard a new company they sign the contract mm-hmm. and, and they're ready to to partner with vivi it my understanding was that it takes about six months at minimum at a minimum before they actually release the first collectible because they already have time slots allocated for you know what what is it two comics per or week. even longer because i think they had marvel for a long time i think much longer than six months before the first marvel nft drop spider-man drop yeah 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 exactly like mm-hmm. that's case in point right so between signing they have to meet with the the people who are behind that department yeah that maybe a new department for that ip then they have to provide which collectibles or, or which items in general it could be a comic too that they want to select and why and and align it with some timeline of events that that are going to be coming up maybe there's a movie coming out maybe mm-hmm. there's a game. maybe there's a new line of who knows uh plush toys related to the ip uh then there's uh hiring the the designers you know and then going back making sure that it aligns with what the the department wants and bringing it back to the designers of the collectible or comic and assigning it to a time slot for for a drop day right yeah i mean i'm i know i'm not i'm not a professional in 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 that space i don't know the ins and outs but in general i think that kind of captures what the process kind of looks like from a you know a bird's eye view it sounds about right and also we don't even know if david it just you know messing around maybe he visited some stores or restaurant and and he just got excited you know so the way i think about pokemon is i set my expectation very low and then and also because in the past during a community update he mentioned that well it sounds like they didn't have pokemon back then i'm not sure about now but they have always been in touch uh, about a potential partnership simply because David and Alfred Khan already had that connection with the company Nintendo way, way in the past because they allowed David to sell Pokemon merchandise in uh, New Zealand and Australia. So I think they are pretty tight, but I'm not sure about Pokemon agreeing to release these these characters on BB. That's why I kind of restrain myself from talking about it because it, it does get pretty exhausting yeah and like i think it's fair i think it's fair to say at this point if even if they did confirm if even if david confirmed it or whoever from the team said it out loud Mm -hmm. brought it to the limelight we'd still be like at least half a year off from the oh yeah so quarter end of quarter four 2023 maybe quarter one of 2024 so i don't think that there's any reason for people to be selling off anything right now unless they really like the the next drop that's coming on vb and it's already been announced yeah especially like some collectibles we saw a long long time ago like i think the the monster hunter dragons those i've seen vb demos back in 2021 like early 2021 i've seen those collectibles in a, a demo that Dan and David did to pitch VV to potential investors. And it took them maybe, I think, two and a half, three years to actually drop those collectibles. So yeah, it's going to take a while. Hey guys, just a quick message. Every week, I, Mr. V, work over 20 hours to bring you the most non-BS VV content. English is my second language, and there were nights we recorded until 1 a.m. My brain stopped processing, and I naturally spoke Vietnamese to him, and it got pretty weird. But that's just how dedicated we are to this podcast. In return, we ask you to enter a gentleman agreement. We will continue working until 1 a.m. for you, but we ask you to subscribe to the podcast, 
leave us a rating and tweet at us to tell us what you think because those comments will ultimately help us to refine the content just for you. That's it. That's all you need to do. Let's get back to it. The next photo that David shared was Uniqlo. And I completely believe that this is a real thing because are you aware of Uniqlo? I've been to a store, I think, okay. in Orlando, Florida. I've walked through the store and all I know is that it's a, maybe a clothing apparel store. I don't know. So it is a Japanese apparel uh, brand retailer, and they are one of the biggest fashion retailers globally. And I'm a big fan of Uniqlo. I think at least 90 to 95% of my clothings are from Uniqlo. Oh, no because, way. Yeah, I am like, when I go out, usually from head to toe is pretty much Uniqlo all the way because they make really high quality products at a very affordable price. Like I love their t-shirts and they only cost like 12 bucks and they're super duper comfortable. I'm a big fan of the brand. And also Uniqlo has a track record of collaborating with other IPs and artists. For example, they did some collaboration with Sesame Street, um, Carl's, Keith Herring, among others. So I, I have zero doubt that they will release something on Vivi. It's just a matter of what that collectible will look like. Is, is that gonna be like different outfits for the avatars in the Vivas or something else? But I think I am pretty sure that this partnership between Uniqlo and Vivi does exist. And I'm pretty excited to see what kind of ideas they can come up with. Yeah, this is kind of like a puzzle, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you have a picture to go off of and hopefully you do, right? Yeah. A complete picture in mind or right in front of you. And then you have all these puzzle pieces spread out and then you're just trying to match it to where they belong. But I feel like with Vivi right now, we have the puzzle pieces, but no precise picture, <laughs> clear picture of what we're, what we're going to end up with. Right? right. So I think it's, it's real. There's a lot of suspense that they're creating, but with that suspense comes a lot of excitement, uh, with the, the, uh, with the unknown. Yeah. So that, those are the three brands that David mentioned from his trip to Japan. Hopefully there's going to be more in, in the next few days. I was pretty happy with the localization on the app and more push notifications too. But I'm going to talk about localization because I think this is a very simple and subtle change, but it will have a big impact on their marketing effort. I don't think it will bring a whole lot of people right away with just new languages because they have to do other things too uh, in order to bring people in and then people see, okay, this experience is very easy. Uh, I can understand Vivi because it is in my local language in Japanese or Spanish or French or something like that. So having these new languages alone won't do much, but having it as a part of a bigger effort will have very significant impact. So I think this is a very big stepping stones for three reasons. So more like three examples. When you think about Hollywood movies, Marvel or DC and Disney can spend millions and millions and millions of dollars making these movies, if they were to showcase these movies in only the English speaking countries, they're not going to be very successful and they won't be able to achieve that global adoption, that global popularity for these characters, right? When they bring the movies abroad and add subtitles or voice over, then they are, you know, breaking down the, the language barriers. They are allowing, you know, kids from Vietnam, Thailand, Ghana, to resonate with these characters, the Hulk, Captain America, Thor, Batman, and they are creating that fandom abroad by having localization. Same thing to the comic books. Uh, I grew up reading a lot of this comic book, this Japanese comic book called, I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly, but it's called Doraemon. And the only reason why I like Doraemon is because they are translated to Vietnamese. So I read through a lot of these comic books. I like them a lot. I am a fan. And that is because it is available in my native language. Um, and also there's a lot of like, you know, cultural appreciation too. 
because you know if somebody from Japan who likes to collect Ultraman, they come in, they they see their IP, they see the the Japanese characters and VV, but the whole app is in a foreign language, aka English. They're not gonna really appreciate it, right? Because it feels like they are out of the game. But if they can onboard successfully and they see the whole experience, they can walk through the whole experience in Japanese, that will onboard so many more people and that will create a familiarity right from the get-go. Um, and another example that I mentioned in my tweet was the fact that apps like Facebook and Uber and Twitter are uh, made in the US essentially. But my family in Vietnam, they love using Facebook or Instagram simply because they because they can use the Vietnamese version of Facebook without Facebook translating that whole experience from English to Vietnamese. I bet you millions and millions and millions of Vietnamese won't even touch it because the app is just irrelevant to them. You know, so it is some people will say, oh, it's just translating from English to other languages, but it's much more than that. You know, uh, I was talking to a person who's pretty experienced with this sort of thing. And I think it's exciting. Um, the only thing that has me kind of like wondering why this took so long. I mean, we, we already. Oh, know. yeah. I, I also wonder why it took so long, too. You know, there's there's a uh, I'm phrasing this very poorly, but I'm, give, I'm doing my best here um, that there's like packages that you could uh, use to to do all of this like within a day, mm. like all this, um, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, localization. Yeah. It's like a whole bunch of different languages. And I'm wondering, like, not, not that it's going to do any good, but like this, this is like one thing that could have been done in a day because like that's what's been advertised with these companies that, that have the software to be really quick. Um, so, but in either case, I, I did want to say that, uh, it, it shouldn't have taken this long, but I'm glad to see that it's, it's happened. It's happening right now, and that's for it's a it's a great next step. Um, what what do you think is gonna what have have you have you tried it? Have you changed the language on the app yet? No, because I don't know any of the other languages besides uh, English and and Vietnamese. Okay, so, right. yeah, um, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a shot then. Um, I I understand Spanish and I speak it as well so i could give it a shot and maybe i could report back to 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 you on the podcast um next time so i'll table that maybe it's more okay we can apply this uh translation app like a like a google translation to vv and have it available in 50 languages but i think it has something to do with providing context for the translation um you know just to make it not just like a like a one to one translation but a translation that makes sense that makes common sense to those who speak that language oh i see okay mm -hmm. all right so so i'm a linguist like uh uh i, I studied linguistics during my masters it was mm -hmm. the bulk of it and so i think what you're saying and correct me if i'm if if i'm misunderstanding um there are some terms that exist in other languages that other con that other languages may not recognize because they have no need for it. So the the translation, the words that they use may not represent the ideas and concepts that they're trying to convey. Yeah. So yep. and because they're dealing with such big IPs, they want to make sure that they're being represented completely as they see fit. Because also keep in mind, like uh, what's his name, old rhubarb. What's his name, Corey. Yeah, Corey, I think, yeah. Literally, like, old rhubarb. Mm -hmm. His, he's, everything that he says is scripted by the, the companies. Like, so, like, yeah. the, the comic drops, all of that is scripted and reviewed before he... Same thing it. to the uh, community update. There's there's a reason why they don't do a, a live stream. But okay. they record everything in advance, and then they kind of premiere, just like we do with our episodes. Yeah. So... Yeah. So now, okay, that makes sense for me. Thank you for for coming. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, the um, 
if you were to say, okay, that's going to be a drop tomorrow, the word drop doesn't have that specific, doesn't have a similar meaning uh, to drop in Vietnamese. So if they were to translate one to one to Vietnamese, for example, I would not be able to understand it. And it's going to sound very, very weird to me. Um, so there are like certain terms like that, that won't work if you were just to use a very simple uh, software to do it. But I do agree with you. This is something that they should have done a long time ago. That was a lot of updates in terms of partnerships and brands and improvement to the apps. I'm seeing a lot more push notifications that are pretty specialized. Like now I know if, if many people are commenting on posts on a feed um, and they also announced that they are coming to San Diego Comic Cons in July with Marvel. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I really want to attend one of those. Uh, I'm, I'm still holding out some hope that I can go to the one in New York. And you haven't been to one either, right? No, I have never been to any. Yeah. I know that there's some uh, YouTube influencers that record, like live, do a live recording or live broadcast of of the the floor and what's yeah. happening so i'm looking forward to those kind of living vicariously through those people um mm -hmm. yeah i know that the uh like the so we're both in the east coast right but the flight to san diego during the mid of july like that flight is going to be very very expensive and hotels and and, and everything too uh so that's why i i also look forward to the one in new york city I think it's going to be at some point in October. I'm putting this out there uh, right now. I'm thinking about putting together like some way to streamline the whole experience, like maybe doing blocks of hotel rooms, uh, coordinating like flights that have people together that are all going together for the. Uh, That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. You know, uh, more to come. Maybe I hope, hope, I hope I can. Fantastic. To, to to make it an experience from when you're leaving to when you arrive when you step foot yeah wherever the next maybe V is already on top of it but I think it'd be cool uh, for us to be able something like that we can do like a small meetup I I know that we don't have a whole lot of listeners or subscribers but I think if we put the words out there we, we can connect with some listeners and get their feedbacks and comments on how we are doing as a podcast and how we can do how we can do better because for for podcasts they don't have like a uh, like a comment section so people cannot really tell us if they are annoyed because of something or if they enjoy something and, and they want to see more so yeah definitely we should think about doing something like that yeah and hopefully yeah. they're not annoyed by me <laughs> <laughs> yeah getting this review off of the podcast it should be okay <laughs> it should be okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have enjoyed the episode today. And if you have, remember that gentleman agreement. We will continue working until 1 a.m. just for you. But in return, we ask you to subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on the actionable and valuable insights, everything VV and Omi related. Don't forget to give us a rating and tweet at us. So let us know what you think about the podcast so that we can refine the content better just for you. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again next time. Peace.